watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Good evening, listeners. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are watching from, I'm speaking from Houston, Texas, so we are in the evening. So that's why I say good evening. If you are in morning, if your time is morning, good morning. If it is afternoon, good afternoon. May God bless you in Jesus' name. As you listen, may God touch your heart. May these words that will come out of my mouth through God not fall on a solid ground or stony ground, but let it fall on a fertile ground. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we give you glory, we give you honor. We appreciate you for all things. We appreciate you for life. We appreciate you for everything that you do for us, for your protection, for your love, for your mercy that endures forever. We thank you for our families. Thank you, O God, King of glory, for the works of our hands. Thank you for your presence in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, I commit myself to you this evening, and I pray that you speak through me. I pray that you use me as a microphone to speak to your people in the name of Jesus. We pray that the listeners will, uh, will accept the words that are coming from the oven of God and they will work with it in the name of Jesus. We ask that, oh God, King of Glory, as they listen, that they will make changes in their lives, even myself, in the mighty name of Jesus, to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Our God and our Father, our aim is to make sure that everyone that listens make it to heaven at end in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help us, help the listeners so that we will be in right standing with you even as we listen and practice what is said today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our topic for today is catch and deal with the little foxes. And our text is taken from Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. And it says, catch us the foxes. I'm reading from New King James Version. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine, for our vines have tender grapes. Another version of the Bible says catch all the foxes the little foxes that rain the vineyard for our vineyards are blown so when something is blossom means something is good so i'm speaking specifically to the believers and even those that are not give, that have not given their life to christ we last time dealt with um, the the loss of the flesh which hinders us from worshiping god in spirit and in truth and those loss of the flesh that we dealt with during the last uh, administration was uh, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, violence, um, um, idolatry, strife, hatred, um, heresies, envy, murder, and revealing. Those ones, there are certain things people call big sin and they are called, they call small sin. But sin is sin. Sin is anything that you do that is against the commandments of God. So as long as it is not in line with the will of God or it's not according to the, how the standard of God, it's a sin. So the ones that people see as little sin, those are the ones that we say, we are, I'm saying, the Bible says we should catch up. We should catch them up and deal with them. And that is taken from Solomon, Songs of Solomon 2.15. So those, these foxes, what are foxes? Foxes are small animals, little animals. They are very destructive to vineyards. So these foxes, how are they? They look small, they look beautiful, but you never ever expect that they can destroy anything. But they are very, very destructive. So these foxes are the sins, the little sins, the things that we consider to be little. But they are not little in the eyes of God. These things that we do, we may do them every day. We commit these sins every day without even feeling that we are committing sin. We look at the people that are uh, killing, the people that are doing other things, committing adultery, those that are uh, uh, embezzling, those that are doing fraud one way or the other. We see them as the people that are sinning. But there are certain things that we do that 
God considered them as sin. So the, the sons of Solomon described them as small fox, little foxes. And these things affect our salvation. It affects our relationship with God. That is why sometimes when we pray, we don't get answers to the prayers because these little sins, these things we call little sins, are always present in our life. And it separates us from the uh, relationship with God. It scares away the Holy Spirit in us. So what are foxes? We have foxes are those little animals that destroys, disturbs the vineyard, as Solomon puts it. What are that this vineyard? Vineyard is that that thing that you 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 you, you cultivated that that kind of that that treasure of yours. Anything that destroys your treasure is seen as foxes. And what is this treasure? Your relationship with God is a treasure. Your aim to make heaven is a treasure. It's something that is very important to you. Except if it is not important to you, then don't consider these fox, little foxes. But if your life is aimed at making it to heaven, you have to consider these uh, small foxes. And these foxes, what are they? They destroy your righteousness. They disturb your salvation. They destroy your relationship with God. They, con they, they, they could be destroyers of church. Those people that are in church that plant seeds of discord, they are also foxes. Those that use various to deceive people, it's another kind of foxes. Foxes are facts. If you really know foxes, they are little animals. They look beautiful. They, uh, they, 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 their sizes make people think that they cannot destroy anything. But they are very, very destructive. So these foxes can be represented with sin. The sins that we think they don't, they don't matter. And those sins are like lying. Lying is a small fox. It's a small force that you can even lie more than one time, more than ten times a day, without even feeling that you are committing a sin. Lying is a sin, and um, it is. The Bible tells us in Revelation twenty-one, verse twenty-seven, that no liar will go to heaven. Revelation twenty-one, verse twenty-seven. He said, "And they shall no wise enter into the into it." that defiles neither whosoever walketh abom abominably so if and they shall be they shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles neither whatsoever walketh abominations or make a lie but they wish they wish are written in the lamb book of life even if your name is written in the lamb book of life and you commit you keep lying i'm i'm very sure that at the end of the uh, journey you will that person will not make heaven so lying is one of those foxes we have to deal with it we have to try to take away lying spirit lying spirit is very very possessive if you are used to it it is difficult to come out of it but with prayers and with fasting you can come out of lying lying spirit is something that if he has gripped you it is hard to take away but with prayers, as I said, you can come out of it. Foxes are members of uh, 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 carnivorous animals, which means they are related to wolves, jackals, and dogs. They are medium-sized weight, anything between 2 to 4, 24 pounds, with pointed face, little frame, and uh, bushy tails. If you look at corny, uh, foxes, they are very corny. They sometimes work in pairs. They steal fruits from vineyards. So stealing, little stealing, you may say you pifering, is also foxes. It's, it's, uh, it's one of them, one of the foxes that we need to take away. If you are fond of stealing somebody's thing, and maybe you say it's a smart way of getting something, or you go to work, you pick up all the uh, official, uh, uh, office, office uh, uh, supplies, and you go away with them. This thing is stealing. It's a it's pifering. So it is one of the foxes that you need to take away from your life. Like I said, if anyone is involved in such things, know that you are far away from God. You may say it's just little thing. It's not true. Stealing is bad. Another one is unforgiveness. You know, when you, you somebody offends you and you just don't want to forgive, what is it that somebody will do to you that you don't want to forgive? Unforgiveness is bad. You need to forgive one another. This relation, this uh, unforgiveness can destroy relationship. 
and God does not like unfor uh, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is very bad. It is uh, it's like a, it's like somebody uh, punishing himself or herself and saying that the person that uh, I'm, I'm not forgiving, I will deal with the person. You're not dealing with the person, you're dealing with it yourself. Because even if you're fighting with somebody and you throw somebody down, and you're on top of that person, hitting the person, you're already down, and the person is down. The moment you get up, if you forgive the person, you forgive the person, it's like you've gotten up from being down. You get up, and you rise up. So it is not, it's very important to throw away uh, unforgiveness. Just turn to God. You can, if, if it is difficult for you to forgive people, you still need to pray. You still need to ask Holy Spirit to help you. It's not by power, it's not by might. Unforgiveness in uh, um, Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 and 14. Our Lord, Jesus, our Lord said, it is a commandment, and he said, our Lord, in our Lord's prayer, he said, and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Verse 14 says, for if you forgive another, if you forgive other other people when they sin against you your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others their sins your father will not forgive you your sins what do you want do you want to forgive others so that god will forgive you or do you want to remain in your sin and uh, uh, after asking god to forgive you and you just assume because christ have died and that because christ have died uh, your sins are forgiven. Whereas you have not forgiven on, on any uh, people that have offended you. So you have to forgive those that have offended you and let them go. And Peter was asking Christ in uh, Matthew 18. And he said, Jesus, uh, he asked Christ, how many times can one forgive the other? And Jesus answered him. He just praised Peter himself said, uh, like seven times. And Jesus said, no. That you have to forgive 70 times 7. 70 times 7. So each person that offends you, you need to forgive that person 70 times 7. Which means at any point you need to forgive. You need to forgive people of their uh, shortcomings against you. If not, you will not have friends. You will not have uh, uh, your, your, your family members would all desert you. Because if you don't forgive, which means you will bear grudges against them. Then you will say, oh, I don't want to have any friends. I don't need to have friends. A lot of people are so, so, so much uh, in uh, grudge that they don't want to relate with anybody. Because this one has offended me. This person has offended me. This family member has offended me. This friend has offended me. As you move in life, people will continue to offend you. And all you need to do is to forgive. If not, you will become an island. Praise the Lord. Unforgiveness is also bad. Because if you continue with unforgiveness, you can get sick. It causes sickness. It causes high blood pressure. It causes depression. It causes anxiety. Unforgiveness is like you drinking poison. It hinders your prayer. Mark eleven twenty five. He says, and when you stand to pray, forgive, forgive, if you have ought against any, that your heavenly Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your own trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is repeated in this verse. Unforgiveness degrades your relationship with Christ. It brings it down. Hebrew 12, 15 says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble, trouble you. Springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So if you don't forgive, know that you are going to hell fire. You are going to hell. It separates you from God. Holy Spirit does not dwell in unforgiving hearts. Therefore, it is important that you forgive all that trespass against you so that God himself will forgive you. Another uh, uh, fox is stubbornness. Stubbornness, somebody who is disobedient. You don't want to listen. Uh, you are so prideful that you don't want to take instruction even at your place of work. You are so big that you don't want to take, if you are a child, you say, oh, I know it all. I don't want to obey my parents. I don't want to obey my father. I don't want to obey my mother. I don't want to obey my seniors. 
then you'll fall into pit because you make a mistake that you put you into trouble. Stubbornness is also disobedient. Anyone that is disobedient to God is stubborn to God. That's the diff there's a difference between sheep and goats. Sheep, that's why sheep have shepherd. Sheep have shepherd. Goats, goats, whatever you tell them, if you put them to the right, they are going to the left. But a sheep will follow the shepherd. Anywhere the shepherd says go, that's where the sheep will follow the shepherd to go. What are we? Are we sheep or are we goats? So we should decide. When you hear, when in the Bible you hear God said the shepherds and the sheep. So which means sheep, they are obedient. So everyone that is stubborn is not obedient. So whether you are stubborn to people, but you are, uh, you are obedient to God, it doesn't work that way. You have to be stubborn, you have to be obedient both at work, at home, and to, the, to God himself. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 29 verse 1 says, A man who hardened his neck after much reproof will suddenly be broken beyond remedy. Do we want to be broken beyond the remedy? No. So we have to cease from being stubborn. Children, obey your mother and your father so that your days will be long. Which means if you disobey your parents, you may not live long. You may not live long. So the best thing is to obey your parents because they have wisdom. They are older than you and they know how it is to be obedient. If you disobey your parents and say, don't go here, don't do this, and you go fall yourself into a, a trap, that trap will not be able, God, God may not be able to save you from that trap because you are walking in disobedience. Even to adults, if God said, don't do this, all these things listed in uh, Galatians 5 from verse 17, uh, 19 to 21, that we should obey God. We should not, we should not do all, uh, things like, uh, we should not do, be, uh, be, uh, be, uh, should not fornicate, we should not commit adultery, we should not do witchcraft, all those things, we should not uh, uh, obey, do worship other gods that is not uh, almighty God. All these things are things that we need to obey, whether we are children, whether we are adults. So all these things are the things that we need to catch and deal with. Those little foxes, lying, unforgiveness, malice, you don't talk to people. How can you pray when you don't talk to people? When somebody is talking to you, you don't want to listen, you don't want to talk to the person, how can you pray? How can you pray? When you pray, God will not listen to you. God will not even look at you. Another one is covetousness. There are people that are not contented with what they have. They are always looking for something that they will take from somebody. They are always looking for how to snatch somebody. The kind of businesses that are going on in the world right now. People are not interested to work hard. They are only interested to take what belongs to others. Through other ways, through internet, through any form. They are trying to pull money from people's accounts and they give it names, beautiful names. Those are not businesses. Those are stealing. So all these things, covetousness. Covetousness is when you want to take that something that doesn't belong to you. You want to take it by trick. You want to take it by force. It is covetousness. People go around taking people's things, assuming, claiming properties that are not there, selling things that don't belong to them. Luke 12, 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life constitutes not in the abundance of things which he po uh, possesses. Exodus 20, 17 said, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his men servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Anybody who is covetous is a thief. So if you've been eyeing things that don't, be, don't belong to you, trying to take things that don't belong to you, that things that belong to your sister, to your brother, and you want to convert it because you want to get things from your, your brother and your sister, you are against his wife. You are fighting his wife. You are fighting the, the husband just because you want to claim the things that belong to them. That is a sin. And God hates it. A lot of believers, they, they are believers. But when it comes to taking people's things or converting, they don't think about it as sin. They feel it's something they need to do. And once you are living that kind of life, I tell you, you are far away from God. You better drop it and con believe that God will prosper you and ask God for yours. And don't put your mind in anybody's thing. 
a covetous person may end up stealing. A covetous person is never, never honest in his dealing with money. A covetous person is always in debt because he or she is never contented with what he has. A covetous person is uh, infidelity. He has an infidelity. Is covetousness may lead to infidelity, make you or uh, make you to commit adultery. Not being satisfied with your spouse. A chance of making heaven is not possible if you are living this kind of life. So it is better to drop that fox of covetousness. Another one is nagging. Nagging. There are people that never handle issues in short in short terms. When you have a problem with your husband, when you have a problem with your sister, or whoever you have a problem with, can you just discuss it, iron it out, then settle it? Why do you have to nag days upon days, hours upon hours, nagging, talking on the same issue every day? Drop it and march forward. Another fox is a pride. Huh. The Bible says, God resists the proud. And give grace to the humble. A prideful person. A prideful, if you are proud, if I'm proud, then I, should, I shouldn't be here. Prideful people are always thinking they are more than, higher than everybody. They think they are better than everybody. They think that everybody around them is not up to them. God hates it. God hates the proud. So it is a fox that we need to catch and deal with it. And dealing with these things, it's not just saying it. It's thinking of how you will take it out of your life. Dealing with uh, foxes is something we need to take serious because it will take us either to, uh, to prison, it will solve our relationship with God, it will solve our relationship with friends, it will solve our relationship with everyone around us. Dealing with uh, 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 catching foxes and dealing with foxes, little foxes, is very important in our Christian life. Because the Bible says no liar will enter the kingdom of God. No liar. Which means ordinary lie can take us to hell. Ordinary pifering can take us to hell. Gossiping can take us to hell. Unforgiveness can take us to hell. Backbiting can take us to hell. Those things that think we think it, it doesn't matter. They matter a lot before God. And these things that we do and we think is little sin, it separates us from the Holy Spirit. We need to change. We need to consider these little things. We see it as little. They are not little. Disobedient is one is also if you disobey your mother and you obey God, how did you obey God? If you disobey your father and you obey God, how did you obey God? If you disobey authority and you obey God, how did you obey God? Does it work together? No. Disobedient is disobedient. So do not say, I read the Bible, I keep, the God, uh, I keep God's commandment, but I am not a sinner. It's a lie. You are a, we are, you are a sinner. Another one is laziness. Hmm. Laziness is a fox that we need to deal with. Unwilling to make effort. Lack of the willpower or desire to perform a given task. Laziness is some kind of mental and physical uh, disability that people put in themselves. It is easy to take care of. Lazy people are usually poor. Do you want to be poor? Lazy people are the people that go about to steal. Lazy people are the people that want to convert things that do not belong to them. Proverbs 10, 4 to 5 says, a lazy hand makes for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Verse 5 says, He who gathers crops in summer is prudent son, but who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. The same Proverbs 10, 11 says, Those who walk their land will have abundance food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. Proverbs had a lot to say about it. Proverbs 14.23 says, All hard work brings a profit, but may talk leads only to poverty. Why am I saying this? A lot of people are so lazy. They don't want to do anything. They believe they can get what they want from somebody else. Who will be the person that will work and you take the money? 
Why don't you work? Why don't you look for something to do? If they, did, if you don't have job, can't you start a business? Can't you start something small? You want it big. Proverbs twenty four says, "Sluggards do not uh, plow in season." So at harvest time, they look but find nothing. Proverbs has a lot. So do not be lazy. Lazy people are slothful people. Watch lazy people. If they have rich parents, they will not like to work, but become great wasters. They waste wealth. Proverbs 26, 13 to 5, 15. Slothful man says there is lion in the way. A lion is in the street. As the door turns upon his hunger, so doeth the slothful upon his bed. You keep sleeping. Some women don't want to work because their parents, their husbands are rich. What of if that money finishes tomorrow? What of if that wealth disappears? Some husbands don't want to work because their wives are doing well. Why? This, why? Why are people lazy? A lot of people laz are lazy because because of poor upbringing. Their mom and dad did not train them well. Some are lazy because of procrastination, lack of willpower to make decision, pride and self deceit. Some people love to depend on others because they are lazy. Wrong perspective mind and mindset. It is better to do something. Laziness can cause covert poverty. Lazy people waste resources. Laziness is waste of time. It causes separation. And it can cause divorce in marriage. God hates it. That's why God said, if you don't work, don't eat. It affects growth in family. How can you overcome laziness? Start to do something. Start a little business. Obey God's word. In James 1.22, it says, But ye doers of the word, and not the hearers, only deceiving your own selves. You are hearing the word today? Please, obey the word. Have plan in your life. I pray that God will deliver us from uh, for anyone that is lazy from laziness. All these uh, uh, small foxes, whether it, it be covetousness, whether it be unforgiveness, whether it be stealing, whether it be uh, gossip, run from it. It is not good. May God help us as we take care of these foxes, as we catch them and deal with them and take them away from us so that they will not destroy our relationship with God and with our fellow men. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, King of glory, Jehovah, this moment, O oh God, these words have come to your people. Father, I pray that they will not fall on stony ground. We pray that they will deal with the foxes that are in their lives. Catch the foxes and deal with them so that they will be better persons before you, O oh God. For that, so that they will be real Christians, believers. And if you have not given your life to Christ, please, you then it means that you have both the big ones, sins, and the small ones, as people may say. But every sin is a sin. On that, uh, give your life to Christ today. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Believe in your heart that he died for you. Confess with your mouth that he is your Lord. Ask him to forgive your sins and give your life to Christ. So that your name will be written in the book of life. And if your name is written in the book of life, you become a child of God. And then you read the Bible and go to a church, a, a Bible-believing church to hear more of the words. Study your, the word to get yourself approved. Seek God every day of your life and you shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Father, help us, O God, to obey you in all things so that at end we will make it to heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ.